All right, guys. Let's talk about this book. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk about it. So, you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys have seen this book. You guys have seen the reviews, um, or should I say the rants? Zenith, the Androma Saga. You know, it just brings a lot of strong emotions out of us here on booktube and so I just kind of want to talk about why this is not going to be your typical ranty video um, don't get me wrong there are some people out there who read this book and genuinely enjoyed it and not because they were fans of Sasha or her channel or Lindsay or her channel but they just genuinely enjoyed this space odyssey high adventure heist situation that was being attempted here and you know, kudos to you guys. That is great. I'm glad you you know you found something to enjoy in this novel, and that it was great for you. But you know, majority opinion was not you know too happy with this. And so I want to talk about some things that I haven't seen covered in other ranty review videos today in this video, because best believe, I unfortunately did not enjoy this. Um, I DNF'd it actually. I DNF'd it. And I just want to start off by saying that I have a lot of respect for people who have the guts to put out a published work, to put out, it's like having a child. You know, this is your baby, you put out your work out into the world. So on that basis alone, kudos, respect, good for you. Um, that is something to be celebrated and applauded. And unlike some other rent reviews, I do not regret spending the money on this book. I pre-ordered it because I wanted to support them. I want to support fellow booktubers. I don't care if they're super huge and popular and they probably don't need my coins. I still wanted to support them just on the principle of the matter. We're all in the same community and I'm an aspiring writer as well. And I just want to put that good energy and karma out into the universe and just kind of, you know, have that out there, that positivity. So want to get that out of the way. Also want to get out of the way that I am a subscriber and a fan of both of their channels. Or I was. I unsubscribed to a whole bunch of people, but had nothing had nothing to do with them. I promise. I was just decluttering. Long story. Anyway, I followed Sasha's channel for years. I've watched some of Lindsay's videos. She is a pretty decent author, in my opinion. Sasha, you know, she's new at this, so that's something else I want to get out of the way. I'm not just bashing them. I'm actually not even going to be talking about them in this video. This video is going to take a different angle and a different look into why I did not like this. And I will link some other reviews down below that go in depth into like the plot and the writing and the pacing and all the technicalities and the technical errors and all that stuff, world building, all that. We're not talking about that in this video. So if you came here for that, that ain't what we're gonna be talking about. Sorry. But, you know, just to appease y'all, let me just give you guys some brief bullet points on my overall views on the actual book and the writing. Number one, the writing was lazy and sloppy. People have talked about it before. Lots of phrases being overused. The descriptions made no sense, etc., etc. Again, I will link some great reviews down below that you can check out. Point number two, this plot basically consisted of, you know, themes, and storylines that five or six other YA authors have already done, and a lot of them done well. And all of those kind of smushed into one book. It, A for effort. Number three, there was lots of telling and not showing. Again, lazy writing, or hey, maybe inexperienced writing. This was Sasha's first novel after all, outside of that novella that they put out that was equally as horrendous. Number four, from the way that the book flowed, the pacing, and the way the chapters were written, there just seemed to be no chemistry between the two co-authors. This book distinctly feels like two separate authors and not like two co-writers in this amazing duel that, you know, produces something to the greater good and greater satisfaction of the readers. It just flopped. And unfortunately, it was just overdone here in this book way too many characters and subplots and just what is going on. They just couldn't pull it off. You know, having all these characters and all these point of views just came off as flat, contradicting, and 
ugh, and just so irritating for so many reasons that again I will not go into in this video because many many other people have and way better than me right now. All in all, I think I may have DNF'd this book because reading it made my brain hurt and I was tired of my brain hurting. And so when I got tired of my brain hurting, I started skimming and then I just gave up and skipped to the last few chapters of the book and honestly it made no difference. What else? All in all, just brings me to point number seven. This book was not for me. And that's okay. Like I said, there were some people out there that really enjoyed this, so hey, each their own. Now to the main part of my video, now that I've satisfied you curious people out there that really wanted to know why. Um, who's to blame for this? Whose fault is this? This book reads like their editor hates them. Lindsay and Sasha, that is. Why would their editor do this to them? Where were the beta readers? You know what? Don't identify yourselves, because this is shameful. This is just wrong. How did this happen with such a big publishing company behind them? It's disgraceful. <laughs> frankly, it's embarrassing. <sighs> this is so sad, and frankly, it makes me feel taken advantage of. Although I was the dummy that went ahead and purchased the book even after reading and hating the novella, now you know, I've already said that I want to support them with my coins and all that, so, you know, dummy or no dummy, eh, you decide. It's my fault, really, that's, that's what I'm trying to get out here, but like I said also at the beginning, I really do like Sasha and I also really like Lindsay, but more specifically, I've been a more of a follower of Sasha and I have been following her following? I have been following her ever since she started her channel, which is, it's been years now. I was so excited and happy for her when I heard about this project. Just like I'm happy for, you know, Poe and Banana Books, Christine, that she's getting her book published. Like, I'm happy and I cannot wait, cannot wait for What's Her Face's book to finally pop off. I'm blanking. I am so blanking on her name, on her channel. This is so sad. I love her. I will put her right here. Girl, I am rooting for you. You're the one I'm really rooting for. Don't let me down. But back to my original, original point, I really do feel taken advantage of. I feel like her editor and the publisher just really didn't give a shit about us, the readers. I mean, it feels like this was about money at the end of the day, unfortunately. I feel like her publisher and her editor knew when they, you know, picked up this book and decided to publish it. I mean, granted, Lindsay is a published author and she is, you know, fairly critically acclaimed in a good way with for her former books that she's already written so you know take it with what you will but I almost feel as if the editor and the publisher knew that this book would be a bestseller just solely based off of the following that Sasha had behind her so it just seems very much rooted and based off of her book to pop popularity and fame and success and I just I guess that's what really makes me feel taken advantage of and I don't like it. But then again, if this had been truly amazing, you know, opinion here, although a lot of critics agree with me, but um, if this had been truly amazing and I had really enjoyed this, I don't think I would have cared. So that's the double-edged sword. It's like, if this had truly been worthy in my eyes, I wouldn't have cared that she probably got the publishing deal because she's a huge booktuber, you know? But it says something about all of the writers out there that are so amazing, have such worthy manuscripts that may never see the light of day because they don't have that big, you know, internet popularity and success story behind them. But that's life, you know? It's just not fair. But I definitely do feel that their publisher and their editor definitely prioritize money over the quality here. And this just blows my mind because what does this mean for the future of booktubers getting book deals? Now a lot of booktubers and YouTubers in general that we see getting book deals are not necessarily getting them based off of the merit of them having any kind of writing talent or ability. Again, everything is subjective and everyone feels differently about different writing styles and, and voices and things like that. So, you know, but in general, you know, having good syntax, grammar, um, having an imagin uh, meh, imaginative, yo, where am I? Having an imaginative voice, a unique voice, being able to tell a compelling and straightforward and yet unique and complex story is what is universally admired, universally, I can't talk in this video, universally admired and in, you know, enjoyed by most readers, you know, like 99.9% .9 of people feel like JK Rowling is a genius. Like I've yet to run across someone that's like, hmm, 
her writing sucks. You know, I've run across people that are like, I don't care for the Harry Potter novels for whatever their reasons, they're crazy. But I've never run, you know, heard those people say that she was a bad writer. You feel me? I mean, obviously she's like a huge example in like the positive direction. But bringing back to what I was saying, you know, there's a general consensus of what makes a good story and a well-written story. And I just, I fear for, you know, YouTubers, booktubers in general, who are aspiring authors like myself. Like, obviously, we're not going to get book deals off of our popularity. Like, us smaller booktubers and those of us that aren't, you know, huge internet celebrities, so to speak, here on YouTube and don't have these huge followings. <laughs> I'm not gonna get a booktube over having like 2,000 subscribers. Like that's just not the case. And I don't even have 2,000. So the people who are getting these book deals so easily, like for example, Christine, I'm kind of scared. Is her book gonna suck? Is this what I have to look forward to? Like, is it actually good writing? Or it's, you know, 97% of the reason she got the deal because she's Christine of Pull and Banana Books. I'm, I'm concerned. So of course I'm going to support her, I love her channel, same scenario here, but it's just stuff in the back of my mind. So these are just things that I was thinking about, you know, mostly just who's to blame, do we blame the editor, the publisher, I mean I do. You know, when you start writing, like, it's not going to be perfect, right? You become a better writer by writing more and more. So I'm not going to hold this against Sasha, I probably will not buy the second book, but I'll probably check it out from the library or read a sample on my Kindle before I decide if I want to purchase or not. But I'm not just deciding that she's a horrible writer off of this. You know, we don't know how she's going to grow, evolve, and change. A very popular author that people have basically come to a consensus that has gotten over, that has gotten, that has gotten better at writing over time is Cassandra Clare. And, you know, there are a lot of authors like that. But I just, I just feel that there wasn't enough effort put into the actual structural like presentation of this novel you know on all levels and that hurts my heart it's like there's this big push for this to come out just so it could make as much money as possible and I just wish they had taken a little bit more time with it cleaned it up made it better just, just I'm tired of holding it you know what more can I say who's to blame here you tell me down in the comments like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you in my next video. Bye. Oh, that's exhausting. I still love you, Sasha. Lindsay, you're a sweet girl. Don't hate me. So the only other options were an adult novel and then this, which is a young adult debut novel. Emily XR Pan. Just ignore Teddy if you hear any strange noises. But this says, I didn't cry. That was not my mother. My mother is free in the sky. My mother is a bird. Lee Chen Sanders is absolutely certain about one thing. When her mother died by suicide, she turned into a bird. Lee, who 